Apologies. So I will start again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Live Irish Myths 200th episode anniversary quiz with me, your host, Anthony Murphy, and my co-host, Sue Prenter. Sue is going to tot up the scores as we go along this evening. This will be a wonderful test of just how much you've been paying attention to Live Irish Myths over the past two and a half years uh, and how much you've been reading. Um, but it's not really that competitive. The principal aim here is that we have fun. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube or Facebook, please do feel free to do the quiz yourself and see how you get on. The aim would be, we've 10 rounds of 10 questions. The aim would be, we'll get a couple of rounds done um, uh, after maybe two or three rounds. I will go back to round one and give you the answers to round one. So Sue has two ways of receiving your answers. You can either use the chat. So uh, if you're using Zoom, you should see there's a chat feature. And in the chat, you'll see that you can send messages. Sorry, I'm going to admit there's more people waiting to come in. You can choose everyone in the meeting or you can choose individuals. So you'll see Sue Prenter should be up near the top of that list, co-host in brackets. So if you paste your answers in there as a private message to Sue, she will take all the answers and tot up all the scores. She is also available on Facebook Messenger, but um, I presume, Sue, they would have to be a friend of yours for that to work or else you'll be getting a load of uh, requests. Um, so we'll just wait uh, a few minutes. It'll be a few minutes before we actually get started from the point of view that uh, there are still people arriving. So we want to get every, give everybody a chance to come in and relax and settle. I should also say this is going to take, I reckon, a couple of hours. <laughs> It'll be longer than a regular live stream, you know. I'll probably break halfway through, maybe after around five or six, we'll take a five minute break to allow people to stretch their legs, use the lavatory, go and fetch a beer from the fridge or whatever you're having. Tonight, because it's a special occasion, I am having a glass of wine. Uh, hopefully I won't be slurring the questions as the quiz goes on. No, I'm only joking. I won't. Uh, I'll only be having a little sip. Um, anyway, let us see who is saying. There are a few people saying hello in the chat. And uh, it's great to see you all. Um, yeah, I hope this isn't too testing. As I said earlier on the introductory live stream, there are some easy questions. There are some middle of the road questions. And there's a few toughies in there. Definitely a few tough ones. So good luck, everyone. And a reminder that the prize, first prize, is this wonderful Curbstone 67 pendant made by our own Tom King on Gobba at his forge here in the Boyne Valley. Tom is participating in tonight's quiz. Um, does that mean if you win, Tom, you get your own prize? <laughs> if Tom wins, we we'll give you we'll do my best, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> if you win, we'll give you the second prize, Tom. <laughs> Which is, by the way, a 50 euro voucher. And I didn't announce this before, but I'm going to throw in a third prize, which is a free <laughs> Medical Ireland 2023 calendar because they have just arrived from the printer this evening, or I collected them from the printer this evening. Let me just admit the few who are in. And Sue, there's somebody there signing in as a number. So you just might keep an eye. Uh, yeah. I want to make sure everybody's legitimate that we don't have any spammers. I don't think we will because it was a registered event. There's John Main. Hello, John. Sorry, everybody doesn't get an individual. I, what am I like? Monica Regley. Hello, Monica. <laughs> I met Monica very recently. Uh, Anne Doherty is watching. Peter Kennedy is only down the road there, a few miles down the road. Karen, I think that's, is it that Karen Faye O'Loughlin? Carol Barrett, Joe Butler, Auntie Joe, Michelle Woodburn, Helen Chatter, Josie Weatherford, Adina Sparks, Michael Pike, Nora Gaffney is watching, Paul Campbell. John Main, Mavanway is in the house, Anya Ryan, Patricia Pack, uh, Pilar, Goldstein Day, Anne Crosby, Barbara Murphy, Erica Bow. I hope I haven't missed anyone. And uh, there's one more in the waiting room. So any moment now, we will kick off. So is everybody okay? Just nod or Aye. if if you're not okay, just maybe message us in relation to how you're giving your answers. The proposal is just for those of you who have just joined us uh, at the end of each round. What I'm proposing is that you paste your answers into the chat and send it as a message to Sue Prenter, co-host 
only. Don't send it to everybody in the room unless you want everybody in the room to see your answers. <laughs> um, so paste them in there to Sue. As an alternative to that, uh, you could try her on Facebook, but I, I think you have to be a friend. So uh, if, if anybody's having trouble with that, do let us know, because what we'll do is give you Sue's email address so that you can email your answers to Sue. So hopefully that will work. Um, anyway, let me see. Everybody's comfortable, I hope. I'm not comfortable at all. I, for once, I can see everybody's face and everybody's looking at me. <laughs> Normally, I just look into a camera and there's no feedback. Now I can see it all. I'm so, suddenly, suddenly self-conscious. You got to get used to it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I know we're starting to... Um, we're starting to do all these face-to-face -face things again that we weren't doing for ages. Vanway is suggesting that she doesn't remember anything. Well, uh, let's see if we can refresh your memory a little bit. Nora is saying this should be good. Yes, go team Coda. Now, Coda was making lots of noise before we started. I think he was getting it out of his system. Uh, we gave him specific instructions to be quiet for the next three hours. Do you think he understood? We'll find out. Yeah. Oh, took me I, I, I'm doomed. Oh, no, you're okay, Barbara. If you have it figured out, that's good. Uh, Gary has no mic. That's okay. Don't worry. Michelle yeah. says, we don't expect to know any answers. Ah, no, no, no. You definitely will know a few. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's not an expert level quiz. Some of the questions are expert level. But that's... Uh, that's only just me having a bit of fun. Okay, are we all? Oh, hang on, one more in the waiting room. What time are we on? It is ten past eight. Uh, those of you who are not Irish, I want to make an apology on behalf of the Irish people, which is that nothing in Ireland ever starts on time. Has never done, and probably never will. As they say in Ireland, he'll be late for his own funeral. John Main is in sunny San Francisco. Brilliant stuff. A little bit of an improvement from uh, Bell Mullet, I'm sure, John. Okay, now let me just double check. We don't appear to have anybody in the waiting room. Is everybody ready to go? Shall we get the ball rolling? Deep breath, everybody. Anybody wants to do some meditation? <laughs> <Be late. laughs> Okay, let's get going. So question one, round one, question one. Start as you mean to go on. I'm, 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 I'm only sort of having a little here. What is the name of the Irish Minister for Heritage? He, he is also the Minister for Housing and Local Government. What is the name of the Irish Minister for Heritage? Um, just making sure if anybody is unmuted, um, will you just make sure to check that you mute so that we don't hear your conferring or your noises. Question two. One of the old names for Newgrange is Sheed in what? Sheed in blank. Fill in the blank. And as with all of the questions pertaining to Irish uh, proper nouns and place names and uh, personal names, I will accept variants of the spelling. First of all, because many of you don't speak Irish. And secondly, because... Can't hear you, Anthony. You're muted. How did that happen? Sorry, I apologize. Did we did we hear question two? We do no. no. Did we hear question one? Who was the Irish Minister for Heritage? Yes. Yeah, we did question two as well. And question two, yeah. Did you hear question two? Yeah. He didn't like mm. okay. Okay. Question three. The excavations of Newgrange and Nouth began in the same year. What year was that? And now, in fairness, if you're sitting there going, geez, that's a toughie. I have mentioned that in about two dozen live streams. Question four. Am I moving? Is the pace okay for everybody? 
I mean, in some cases, look, I know that you will either know the answer or you won't. And if you don't, just put an X, you know, uh, or scribble down a guess. No harm, uh, absolutely no harm uh, in guessing. The question number four. The famous Tara High King, Niall Meagielach, was Niall of the how many hostages? The famous Tara High King, Niall Meagielach, was Niall of the how many hostages? And a clue in that one is that the answer is not one. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. In Tochmark Etain, the wooing of Etain, the jealous Fomnach turned Etain into a fly. What colour was the fly? Oh, Jesus. Uh, no, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> That's my <not> fly. <laughs> Uh, it you know it's like pick a color you know if you have to guess okay question number six hope everybody's uh, able to keep up uh question number six in august that's august just gone by in the company of tom king i discovered that what cairn slash mountain in sligo is visible from Cairn S at Loch Croo. In August, in the company of Tom King, I discovered that what Cairn slash mountain in Sligo was visible from or is visible from Cairn S at Loch Croo. I don't see any palpitations or sweating faces just yet. Everybody seems to be coping well so far by the expressions. Question number seven. There are two standing stones at Baltre in County Louth. One is oriented to winter solstice sunrise, which coincides with which islands? There are two standing stones at Baltre in County Louth. That's at the mouth of the Boyne River. Uh, I've written about this in my books and I've blogged about it and we've mentioned it in several live streams. One is oriented to winter solstice sunrise, and that sunrise comes up behind which islands out at sea? What is the name of the islands? And here's one that everybody should know. This is going to be good. This is going to be fun. Question number eight. What happened at 8.47 p.m. on Tuesday, 10th of July, 2018? What happened at 8.47 p.m. on Tuesday, 10th of July, 2018? Look at Tom King scratching his beard. <laughs> <laughs> Question is I'm just, just double checking. Oh, we actually still have a latecomer in the waiting room. They're going to miss round one anyway. Um, we may very, very quickly run through the questions just for the benefit of the latecomers. Question nine. According to Laura Gawala Aaron, which is the Book of Invasions, who was the first person to arrive in Ireland? According to Laura Gawala Aaron, the Book of Invasions, who was the first person to arrive in Ireland? And question 10 is linked to that question. Question 10 is... What famous biblical character was she related to? You don't have to give the relationship. So questions nine and ten. According to Laura Gawala Air in the Book of Invasions, who was the first person to arrive in Ireland? And question ten. What famous biblical character was she related to? So just for the... I think there were a couple of people who arrived in during that round. I'll very quickly go through the first... I won't be doing this every round because it, it'll take all night, but... I'll go through the first 10 questions for the benefit of the latecomers. Question one, what is the name of the Irish Minister for Heritage? He is also the Minister for Housing and Local Government. Question two, one of the old names for Newgrange is Sheed in what? Sheed in blank, fill in the blank. And variants on the spelling are accepted. Question three, the excavations of Newgrange and Nauth began in the same year. What year was that? Question four, the famous Tara High King, 
Niall Nigeluk was Niall of the How Many Hostages. Don't forget that if you are pasting in your answers to make sure that you paste them in privately to Suprenter co-host, not to everybody in the room. Question five, in Tuchmark Etain, the jealous Fomnock turned Etain into a fly. What colour was the fly? Question six, in August last, in the company of Tom King, I discovered that what cairn slash mountain in Sligo is visible from Cairn S at Loch Crewe? Question seven, there are two standing stones in Baltre in County Loud at the estuary of the Boyne. One is oriented towards winter solstice sunrise. Which islands does that sunrise come up behind? Which islands out in the Irish Sea? Question eight, what happened at 8.47 p.m. on Tuesday, the 10th of July, 2018? Questions nine and 10 are related. Uh, question nine, according to Laura Gawala Aaron, the Book of Invasions, who was the first person to arrive in Ireland? And question 10, what famous biblical character was she related to? So hopefully you're all uh, pasting your answers privately to Sue uh, by uh, the chat function. Hopefully that's working for everybody. Um, don't forget, um, yeah, don't forget to keep a record of your answers, just in case there's a breakdown in technology, these things happen, as we have found out on previous occasions. I think uh, Joan is asking a question. Let's ask Joan to unmute. Should be able to speak there, Joan, if you unmute. Ask to unmute. I'm asking you to unmute. Have you got me now? Yes. I'm sorry, Anthony. I, I don't know how you do that answering. If I've just taken a photograph of my answers. So do I email it in? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, Sue, do you don't mind if I give out your email? No, address? no, give it out. That's fine. OK, fine. Well, maybe Sue, you might actually paste it into the chat um, yeah, as, as a message for everybody to see. So I seem to be stuck with just participants here. I can't get out of it. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get Okay, let me, I'll try it anyway. I'll try it as well, just so that we have a backup. Sue.printer at btinternet.com. Is that right? Yeah, that's perfect. Printer at btinternet.com. So that's email address. So if you're not able to use the chat function to send your answers, then please feel free to email either the text or, as Joan has done, an image of your answers. Uh, to Sue on email. So if that's um, okay, we'll proceed. Any other questions? I have a question. Is it okay if I sending, I'm sending the questions or the answers to her uh, one by one because I can't figure out how to paste them in at the end because every okay. time I, is that okay, Sue? Yeah, I'm just looking to see where they're coming through. Can't find them at the minute, but I will. <laughs> okay, it says it's a direct message and it's through the Zoom. So as he says the question, I just type my answer and I send it. Okay, That's what right. I send I um, I'm trying to get out of this participants thing. I've got 34. Hold on one second. Um, more. Why is this not doing what it's supposed to do? This is what Anthony, I, all I've got, I can't get rid of participants at the minute. Um, let me see. Hold on. Um, not what I need to do. What are you yeah. trying to see, Sue? I'm trying to. I'm trying to see anyone's answers who's sending to me. I'm so not if getting you just any click message. chat, you, you see the participants will stay there. But if you click chat, it will come halfway. I don't know if you're on a computer or a tablet or what you're I'm using. On the tablet. Um, in my case, it comes up over yeah. the participant on the bottom. The lower part. Mute participants chat. Invite mute all. Oh, Hold to unmute. Karen's trying to say something. Are you Karen? Hold on. Can you unmute? This is the. Uh... There we are. Um, um, sometimes Sue, if you can move the device you're using, you'll get a yeah. pop-up menu, and you'll yes. see the chat there. And maybe just for everybody who's having difficulty on the chat. Um, if you have a look at where you type in the message, literally just above that, it should say send to. 
And unless you go in and change it, um, it should be reading chat with everybody. But if you yes. click on the little arrow beside that, you should get an option to pick Sue, for example. That is the one you want to choose as Sue Prender. Yeah. Co-host to direct. Uh, That's what I was going to say. That makes so sense. Thank you. I'll mute again. Yeah, click the down arrow and you'll get Sue Prender. Also, uh, you can keep on typing, don't hit return, because I did that the first time and it accidentally sent. So don't hit return, you can keep on putting your answers in. Thanks, Ellen. See, I knew we'd figure it out as we went along. This is how it happens, you know? The main thing is that you're all comfortable and enjoying yourselves. And that's a good taster of things to come. I think most of those questions will be answerable by Okay, so we'll get on with round two, will we? Sue, so are you are they coming through? Live Zoom TV, yes, indeed. Sue, so, so, um, Karen is wondering. You're muted now. Uh, sorry, Sue. I muted everybody. And I there, no, I can't. It's not coming to me at all. I'm looking to see the more, and all I've still got this big thing of participants sitting looking at me and I can't um so when you click chat is your chat button along the bottom of the screen all the buttons are supposed to be along the top but actually it's Sorry. not doing anything at the minute yeah we're going to, we're go we're going to die here really. <laughs> you should have um, you know, participants yeah. a chat button share screen. spotlight yeah I wonder <laughs> has it frozen Admit search. Right. Get rid of council participants. I've just got this list of participants and they can only see me now. I can't see anybody else at the minute. Have you tried moving the device? I find sometimes it would phone. Yeah. And it yes. sometimes. Yeah, try changing it to see if there. There we are. Then we tried that. Remove spotlight, I presume that is. Mute, stop video, share contact, participants, more. And more is not doing anything for me. This is going to be a real pain. Switch to go and review. Okay. Not working. <laughs> I think I think Anthony, we may go back to the original plan that everybody's honest, and when you read out the questions, they they tick and mark themselves. Did you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'm looking for reactions. I yeah. think that's probably the fairest thing. I'm sure everybody will do it that way because this isn't the, working for me. I'll have it turned off and come back on again. On the basis of honesty. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you, if you want to do that, um, yeah. switch off and restart and come back in, I'll keep yeah. on. I'll come back to you. You'll see me. I'll give you a shout on the thing. Okay. For you. Yeah. I'll get on with round two anyway. Yeah. And if it's working for you when you come back, let us know. Right. Do that. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Okay, round two, uh, question number 11. The White Quartz stones at Newgrange were said to have been brought to the monument from where? And that's really a county, isn't it? Or a, a geographical feature of Ireland. That's the best hint you're going to get. The White Quartz stones of Newgrange were said to have been brought to the monument from where? Question 12, in what year, <laughs> this is for those who see who's paying attention, in what year was the Mythical Ireland website established? Let me just check my messages because that might be Sue. Yes, indeed, that is Sue looking to be let in. Sorry, apologies, folks. The, uh, the joys of live Zoom meetings. Anthony, I just ran a meeting at MIT for yeah. scientists and 
we had part Zoom and part live, and it was pretty much go off without a hitch. So we'll get there. That's it. If nothing else, we will have a bit of fun. Sue, are you able to, I'll ask you to unmute there. Are you working now, are you? Hang on, get you to unmute there. I'm clicking last I'm working time. again now, there I'm you. working again, yeah. So are you able to see? You can I'm now looking to see, I've got, looking along here to see what we've got more of. Oh, come on, you silly thing, more. Chat, here we are, chat. I'm bringing up the chat. Somebody's put in here when Anthony was knee high to a grasshopper. I'm not sure what year. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question about what in what year was mythic, the mythical Ireland West. <laughs> so um, perhaps if people want to send their answers to round one to Sue by chat now, that will work. Is that okay? Yeah. And we'll proceed then with the round two questions. Question number thirteen: Who is the author of the book Thirty Two Words for Field? Who is the author of the book, 32 Words for Field? And again, in relation to any Irish names, and proper, proper nouns, etc., spelling will not be crucial, so long as we know who you're talking about. Now here's a slight toughie. Question 14. In what year was St. Patrick said to have lit the Paschal fire in Ireland? Now, because the annals differ, on this, I will accept one of three years, but you have to be close. Actually, I see in the answers I only have two, but I'll talk to Sue about that separately. In what year was St. Patrick said to have lit the Paschal fire in Ireland? It would be too easy if I said what century. Actually, do you know what? I'd probably take the decade. If you're in the decade, we'll take that as, a, as, as we'll, we'll give you a point for that. And question 15, which is immediately related to that, where did he light the Paschal fire? So question 14, in what year was St. Patrick said to have lit the Paschal fire in Ireland? Question 15, where did he light it? Question 16 is also related. Who was the High King of Tara when the fire was lit? Who was the High King of Tara? when the Paschal fire was lit <laughs> St. Patrick at blank in the year blank. <laughs> ah, yes, great fun. Um, question 17. Who led the excavations of Nauth at Brew Nabonia? Who led the excavations of Nauth at Brew Nabonia? And that's sort of related to an earlier question about when did the excavations of Newgrange and Nauth begin. Question 18. My book about Newgrange, first published in 2012, was called Newgrange what? Newgrange blank blank blank. It's out of print now. You won't find it on the website just in case you're going to take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Question 19. What does the word Neolithic mean? What does the word Neolithic mean? And question 20 to finish round two. What era came immediately before the Neolithic, according to archaeologists. What era came immediately before the Neolithic, according to archaeologists? Now, with any look, I'll very quickly read those again. Question 11, the white quartz stones at Newgrange are said to have been brought to the monument from where? Question 12, in what year was the Mythical Ireland website established? Question 13, who is the author of 32 words for field? Question 14, in what year was St. Patrick said to have lit the Paschal fire in Ireland? Question 15, where did he light it? Question 16, who was the High King of Tara when the fire, when the Paschal fire was lit? Question 17, who led the excavations of Nauth at Brunabonia? 
Uh, question 18. My book about Newgrange first published in 2012 was called Newgrange blank, blank, blank. Give me, give me the three words that are missing. Newgrange blank, blank, blank. Question 19. What does the word Neolithic mean? And question 20. What era came immediately before the Neolithic, according to archaeologists? So at this point, uh, please, I'll give you a couple of moments to send your answers on to Sue. Again, privately on the chat or to the email address that we shared a little back, back sue.printer at btinternet.com. And Sue, at some point, uh, I can't see your block by the camera. Where is Sue? Oh, there you are. At some point, when you are uh, happy that you have a round uh, taught it up, uh, we'll then give the answers for that. And maybe you will let us know who's in the lead or whatever. Sorry. Um, is that okay? Yeah. But we'll proceed for now. Yeah. Um, I'll just ask you to unmute there. Sorry about the fact that you should be able to unmute yourself. Can you hear? Well, yeah, some some are sending through in ones and twos. Others are managing to do, sort of send a whole round. So if they want to send the whole round, if they can do that, it's even easier. But anyway, yeah. we'll get through it. If I, I'll get stuck, or if I get stuck, I'll ask everybody what they yeah. can go back through and ask them anyway. As, so so as soon as you have, say, round one, that you're happy that you have it totted up, let me know. And then we'll go back and we'll read out the answers to that. And maybe you can just let us know who, say, the top three are or whatever. Who's, uh, or, you know. Mm. But for now, I'm over. I'm just replying. Yeah, I'll just press. Wow. I'll so just I went ahead and resent mine as a whole big long one from round one. So you can ignore the one by one things. Okay, that's, that's fine, Josie. No problem. Thank you. Is everybody okay? Is everybody keeping up with things? Hope they're not. I know, in fairness, there are a couple in there that are tough. There definitely are. Um, but this is like a good pub quiz. There's always a few tough questions, you know. So I'm going to proceed with round three. And we are at, what, 2036. We started 26 minutes ago. So what's that, 13 minutes around, 10 rounds, 130 minutes. Yeah, we'll be over two hours, I'd say. I'll need five minutes to copy all my answers to Sue again, says Mufanwi. Okay, no problem. We'll, 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 we'll wait a second. Um, I appreciate this isn't um, the perfect way to do this. I'm sure there's probably better software for online quizzes than Zoom, but look, it is what we have, you know. Okay, thanks, Mavanwe. So round three begins with question number 21. The River Boyne rises in which county? The River Boyne rises in which county? And question 22 is related. Most of the River Boyne's course, something like 90% of it, is situated in which county? And obviously, that's not the same county as uh, where it rises. So 21 and 22, the River Boyne rises in which county? And most of the River Boyne's course is situated in which county? Uh, a clue for the second one would be that will be really obvious from anything we've really ever said about Brunibonia, etc. Uh, question 23. What prominent monument in Drogheda is believed in local folklore to be part of the Brunabonia complex? What prominent monument in Drogheda is believed in local folklore to be part of the Brunabonia complex? Again, uh, written about and spoken about in books and blog posts and live streams repeatedly. Ad nauseum, I would say. If you don't know that, you should be asking yourself some deep and searching questions. I'm only joking. <laughs> Sorry. Question 24 is related. What famous bard is said to be interred beneath its great mound? So that's questions 23 and 24. What prominent monument in Drogheda is believed in local folklore to be part of the Brunabonia complex? And question 24, what famous bard is said to be interred beneath its great mound. And again, we will 
uh, give leniency in relation to spelling because the monks never agreed on the spellings. So we're not going to either. Somebody on my live stream earlier on said they, if that question was asked, they would know the answer. There you go. Question number 25. The destruction of whose hostel was the subject of a four part live Irish myths series? The destruction of whose hostel was the subject of a four part live Irish myths series? Uh, which is where that phrase, not difficult that, that came into play. Question 26, who was the healer or physician of the Tua de Danon? Uh, that is a two-part name. You can write it as one and the father, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, so I don't care. Who was the healer or physician of the Tua de Danon? Uh, sometimes called the leech of the Tua de Danon, their healer or physician, the one who made the silver arm for Nuadu. Who was the healer or physician of the Tua de Danon? Question 27. Anybody who's ever watched Live Irish Myths should know this. What was the name of the great monster said to have been slain at Newgrange? What was the name of the great monster said to have been slain and dismembered at Newgrange? Actually, I should put that in there, shouldn't I? Yes. What was the name of the great beast or monster said to have been slain and dismembered at Newgrange? 28. Question 28. According to the Dinshanicus, how many heads did that monster have? According to the Dinshanicus, how many heads did that monster have? So two related questions. Question 27, what was the name of the great monster said to have been slain and dismembered at Newgrange? Question 28, according to the Dinshanicus, how many heads did that monster have? Question 29, what was the name of the boy who killed the Hound of Cullen? What was the name of the boy who killed the Hound of Cullen? And a little hint there would be that he did so with his hurley and his his uh, his schlitter. Very skillfully. The ball went in through the hound's mouth and dra out its rear end, dragging out its entrails. What was the name of the boy who killed the hound of Cullen? And question 30. Who excavated the Fornox mounds in the 1950s? Slightly tough one, that. Who excavated the Fornox Mounds in the 1950s. So that's round three. I will very quickly go back over the answers. Oh, there are a couple of people looking to get in. So uh, they're going to be behind. Okay, anyway, not to worry, look. Okay, very quickly again, round three questions. 21, the River Boyne rises in which county? 22, most of the River Boyne's course is situated in which county? 23, what prominent monument in Drogheda is believed in folklore, local folklore, to be part of the Brunabonia complex? Question 24 is related. What famous bard is said to be interred beneath its great mound? Question 25, the destruction of whose hostel was the subject of a four-part live Irish myths series? Question 26, who was the healer or physician of the Tua de Danon? Question 27, what was the name of the great monster said to have been slain and dismembered at Newgrange? Question 28, according to the Dinshanicus, how many heads did that monster have? Question 29, what was the name of the boy who killed the Hound of Cullen? And question 30, who excavated the Fornox Mounds in the 1950s? So get your answers there to Sue Prenter. Make sure you send them to her on the chat. Uh, as a direct message, do not send them to everyone in the meeting unless you want everyone in the meeting to see your answers. And alternatively, you can email them to sue at sue.printer at btinternet.com. So, is everybody relaxed, happy, mildly happy, uh, wreck, head wrecked? Uh, totally despondent at not knowing any of the answers. I, I doubt that very much. I wouldn't even believe it. Most of you are regular 
regular, regular. So I'm sure most of you know many of the answers. And maybe I will just quickly ask Sue how she's getting on. Uh, well, we ha I've some, some I'm doing well with some others. I'm sort of getting the odd answer and I've got to work back which, which answer the quest, which question the answer is to, but we're getting there. We're okay. all right, we're getting there, don't worry. Will I we? don't think anyone's going to be too, too miffed. Okay. <laughs> Tom, lovely far behind you there, I see. <laughs> so he's put in. Anyway. He's keeping warm. Will I give I answers to round one at this point? Um, I've only got three full answers. I've got to work back to get everybody okay. else who's we'll present. Some are some are not getting answers to at all. Well, so what we might do then is just give all fifty answers at the halfway point, and then I would think so. Yeah. yeah, and everybody can mark their own, and I'll yeah. know whether they're lying or not then from what they've sent me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, so we'll proceed on to round four. So what we're going to do is have a break at question fifty. We'll give all the answers to all the questions. Up until then. Anthony? Yeah. I am so sorry. My computer booted me out and I only got to question 23. I do apologize. I'm actually on the phone at the moment because this other yoke is it just. Keeps uh, okay. Me I'll out. tell you what I'll do, Joan. The easiest thing to do is to paste in the questions, the questions that you missed into okay, the chat I, so that you can see them there. I'm uh, so sorry. No, that's okay. The okay. machine is just. It's that just happens. Died. It's perfectly okay. There's no panic. So there are the questions that you missed. Uh, so uh, question 24 was what famous bard is said to be interred beneath its great mound, which was related to question 23. Yep, got it. Okay, so if you just want to just fly on there and I will. Sue's chat has been disabled for direct messages. What? Yes. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I think Sue came back into the meeting and I did not make her co-host again. That's what's wrong. Ah. Okay. Now let's just uh, make sure. Sue, I can't hear you by the way. If you, now she should be available again as Sue Prenter co-host. You should be able to message her privately. Will you just check and, that? Anthony, I'm so sorry. This phone, I, I've, I've no... I've no way of seeing anything. I can just see you and me. There's no, I've no options to see any chat or anything at all. Oh, all right. hold on, Anthony, I'm, I'm going to join again on the laptop. It's just literally woken up again. Okay. Oh, I have to go back into Google. Oh, Jesus. I'm so sorry. This is a pain. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, technology. It always lets you down when you need it to uh, perform. It's, it's a nuisance. I hate this. It's, it's doing updates. That's what it's decided to do. That's why uh, I was booted. Oh, uh, yeah. And they're not, they're not even my apps. They belong to my son. Okay. And for the benefit of just while we're catching up on things, apologies, folks, but uh, we're all... I'm just going to paste in the first 10 questions. Questions 1 to 10. Lahin missed the first round. Lahin, I'm just going to paste those into the chat there uh, so you can see those and maybe go through them at your own pace that's the first 10 questions there i'm sorry they don't have numbers on them and okay okay now are we all right okay I am going to proceed for the moment with uh, round four, questions 31 to 40. Who began, this is question number 31, pens at the ready, even though you're probably not, you're typing them rather than writing. Who began the excavations of the Mound of the Hostages at Tara, but did not complete them because he passed away? Now, I, I, that is probably a tough one, in fairness. That and the four previous one about who excavated Fornox. I admit that that's a slightly tough one. Who began the excavations of the mound of the hostages at Tara, but did not complete them because he passed away? Question 32. How many curb stones does Newgrange have? 
How many curb stones does Newgrange have? I'm sort of looking at these now and I'm saying these are slightly tough. You really, really would have had to have been paying attention in class. Question 33, how many curb stones did Nouth originally have? Hint, three are missing. How many curb stones did Nouth originally have? Three are missing. We'll probably go easy on you on that answer, given that three are missing. If you're close to it, we'll probably give it to you, you know. Question 34. What type of stone are most of the curbs of Newgrange made from? Um, so there's a one word answer, which is the one that I would use most often in, in any of the videos and, and live streams that I've done. But it is actually also known as something else. So I will take both variants. What type of stone are most of the large curbs of Newgrange made of? And question 35 is directly related to that. Where did these stones come from? Hint, it's the name of a modern fishing village on the Louth coast. So uh, question 34, what type of stone are most of the curbs of Newgrange made of? Question 35, where did these stones come from? Hint, it's the name of a modern fishing village on the coast of County Louth. 36, the best known of the cairns at Schlievenacalia Lock Crew is aligned towards sunrise on what days? The best known of the cairns at Schlievenacalia Lock Crew, that is, uh, one of the hills, just in case. I'm not talking about Karen Bon. I'm not talking about the other uh, hills. This is the one where people go twice a year. That's the biggest hint you're going to get. Uh, is aligned towards sunrise on what days? And question 37 is directly related. What is the name of the cairn? So you may know that Eugene Conwell gave the cairns letters in the 19th century. Uh, you can give me its alternative name, but Cairn what? What letter? Ah, oh, bugger. I'm after giving away. <laughs> Live TV. Question 38. Who excavated some of the Lock Crew Cairns in the 1860s? <laughs> I need to just read the questions and say nothing else. Who excavated some of the Lock Crew Cairns in the 1860s? Anybody who doesn't get that is clearly not listening. <laughs> Question 39. Who was said in mythology to have formed the Lock Crew Cairns by dropping stones from her apron? And again, uh, spelling variations will be accepted, of course. Who was said in myth to have formed the lock crew cairns by dropping stones from her apron. And question 40, last one of round four. What is the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland? Question 40, what is the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland? I am going to repeat these questions. Uh, I think Joan was missing for a few of them with te technical issues. Um, I'll do. I'll probably do this at the end of every round. Question 31. Who began the excavations of the mound of the hostages at Tara, but did not complete them because he passed away? John Main thinks that's a good question. He may be the only one. <laughs> question 32. How many curb stones does Newgrange have? Question 33. How many curb stones did Nouth originally have? Hint, three are missing. 34. What type of stone are most of the curbs of Newgrange made of? Question 35. Where did these stones come from? Hint, it's the name of a modern fishing village. Question 36. The best known of the cairns at Schlievenacalia Lock Crew is aligned towards sunrise on which days? The best known of the cairns at Schlievenacalia Lock Crew is aligned towards sunrise on what days? Question 37. What is the name of that cairn or the label? And question 38, who excavated some of the Lock Crew Cairns in the, in the 1860s? Question 39, who is said in myth to have formed the Lock Crew Cairns by dropping stones from her apron? 
And question 40, what is the highest passage tube in Northern Ireland? Joan is looking for some of the round three questions. What do you say, 25 to 30? I'll give you the whole lot. I'll give you 21 to 30. That's the round three questions. I have a question. Yeah. Are you going to share your wine with us? Of course. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I shall. What is the quickest way to get wine from here to there? Do we have any spacecraft that can get there in half an hour? Uh, unfortunately, on this occasion, Karen, the answer is no. I'm very sorry. <laughs> and I'm just going to paste the round four questions in just for the benefit again of those who are maybe having technical issues. And before we get on to round five, before we take a break and let people stretch the legs, some people think these are really tough. Um, so not everybody's enjoying. I think some of these are probably a little bit on the tough side, but a lot of them should be. Laura is suggesting that we need a dram of something to jog our memory. Funny, I thought Dram did the opposite for your memory, but yes, indeed, <laughs> whatever it takes. Um, yeah, a few people, uh, not, okay, not liking me quite. That's fine. That's what well, it's fine. It's not fine. Um, round three, please. That Joan, round three, all the round three questions. Sorry, I should have. Yeah, I did. They're, they're up there. They begin with the Boyne River rises in which county, Joan? If you, if you look back in the chat, the River Boyne rises in which county? That's the round three questions, okay? And Barbara says, liking, but don't remember. It's a memory thing, isn't it? Um, oh, can't see them as I was not on my laptop at the time. Okay, apologies. So round three questions again for Joan. Paste. There you go, Joan. I'm gonna proceed with round five and then uh, hopefully we'll uh, give you some of the answers before we take a break. Question uh, Round five, question number 41. Don't worry about it. I mean, seriously, this is not competitive. Yes, there are prizes. The main thing is we're having fun, um, despite the technical hitches. Question number 41, and this relates to question 40. Question 40 in the, at the last of uh, round four was, what was, what is the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland? The next two questions are related. Question 41, what astronomical event does its passage point to? So the passage tomb, the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland in question 40, we're now asking for 41, what astronomical event does its passage point to? And question 42, what monuments does its passage point to? One or other or both, if you want. We'll give you a point if you can even mention one of them. So 40, 41 and 42 are all related. 40, what is the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland? 41, what astronomical event does its passage point to? And 42, what monuments does its passage point to? And we'll accept one or other or both. We'll give a bonus point for whoever gets both, actually. Question 43, who is the legendary Scottish woman who trained Cúchulainn? Who's the legendary shadowy Scottish woman who trained Cúchulainn? The next two questions are related. Question 44. In Tochbark Etain, the wooing of Etain, what implement was Elkmar wielding atop Sheedinbroga or Newgrange? when Angus Og visited him. In Tuckmark Etain, what implement was Elkmar wielding atop Sheedinbroga when Angus Og visited? Um, and I think a great clue there, seeing that some people are finding these questions tough, would be it is a wooden implement. And question 45, at what time of year did this visit occur? So you'll know that in the midst, uh, certain events happened at particular times of the year, particular times of the calendar. At what time of the year did Angus's visit to Schiedenbroga when Elkmar was standing on top of it, wielding his implement, occur?
And question 40, uh, Stephen says the dog ate my copybook. One of the most used excuses in the history of school, and that is not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> question 46, what was the name of the pool in the River Boyne in which the salmon of knowledge was caught? What was the name of the pool in the Boyne in which the salmon of knowledge was caught? Question 47 is related. Who caught the salmon of knowledge? 46, who was the name? What was the name of the pool in the River Boyne in which the salmon of knowledge was caught? 47, who caught the salmon of knowledge? And question 48 is also related. What was the original name of the boy who helped him cook the salmon? So question 47, who caught the salmon of knowledge? Question 48, what was the original name of the boy who helped him cook it? And again, spelling variations are acceptable, so long as it sounds something like what it's supposed to be. Question 49, who was the American artist and researcher who wrote The Stars and the Stones, later reprinted as The Stones of Time? an extremely popular and well-known book uh, to anybody who's interested in Irish megaliths uh, that has never been out of print. Who was the American artist and researcher who wrote The Stars and the Stones, later reprinted as The Stones of Time? And question 50, to finish at the halfway point, to finish round five. In what year was the Brunabonia complex inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. In what year was the Brunabonia complex inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list? Now I know uh, certain of these questions may, may seem tough, but uh, those that for instance has been mentioned lots of times on our live streams that year. Um, this Some of these perhaps are not as obscure as they might seem. Um, it's a memory thing, I understand, you know. It's a memory thing. Okay, so we're pretty much at the halfway point. Is anybody looking for previous questions before we begin to give answers and before we look to Sue to perhaps give us at least some indication of who might be leading the fray? Is everybody happy? Are we all look at Tom unscrewing the bottle? Come here, listen, top me up there, Tom, will you? Oh, you're on the red, are you? Ah, fair enough. I'm on the white, so that's fair. Slaunch it. <laughs> yeah. So a mixture of um very easy questions there, uh, middle of the road questions, and a few toughies, absolutely, definitely. But I don't think there's anything on that list of questions that hasn't been given the answer to on several occasions. So it's a memory test more than anything, I think. Um, Sue, I might proceed to give the answers to round one if you're happy to continue totting up there or how do you feel or? Yeah, I, the, they've been coming through in bits and pieces. I've got, I've really only got one person who said I've got complete rounds for three and she's way ahead. Everybody else has sort of been bits and pieces. So, you know. Anyway, it might be easier if you just give the answers out and allow them to mark their own and come back. And I think that's probably the best way. We'll trust everybody to tell the truth. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll do that then. We'll give yeah. we'll give the answers now. And then what we're going to do is just take a breather, get up off the chair, move the legs around, use the lavatory, pour yourself a cup of tea, dram, glass of wine, beer, mead, whatever it is. Um, have a smoke. Okay, so very quickly, um, because I'm conscious that time is moving on, it is now three minutes past nine here, so we're almost an hour in, so halfway. That's not too bad, actually. What is the name of the Irish Minister for Heritage, also for housing and local government? His name is Dara O'Brien, TD. Dara O'Brien. Again, variations on the spelling are acceptable. One of the old names for Newgrange is Sheed in what? And of course, it's Sheed in Broga, B-R-O-G-A, but we will accept variants on the spelling. 
The question three was the excavations of Newgrange and Nouth began in the same year. What year was that? 1962. Yeah, I'm looking. Someone's going, yeah. And someone else is going, oh, I was just one year out. Uh, the famous Tara High King, Niall, uh, this is question four. Niall Mygielach was Niall of the how many hostages? Absolutely everybody should have known that one. Yeah, lots of people nodding and holding up nine fingers. Nine was the right answer. Question five. In Tuchmark Etain, the jealous Thumnock turned Etain into a fly. What colour was the fly? Scarlet or red, if you like. Scarlet or red are the acceptable answers there. Helen Chatter is doing a victory dance. Woo! I got one right. Woo! <laughs> or maybe you got them all right. <laughs> uh, question six. In August, last in the company of Tom King, I discovered that what cairn or mountain in Sligo is visible from Cairn S at Loch Crew? That was Keshkaran. Keshkaran. The cairn and the mountain are both the same name. Keshkaran. Question seven, there are two standing stones at Baltray in County Loud. One is oriented to the winter solstice sunrise, which coincides with which islands? And they are the islands of Rockabill. Rockabill, again, spelling uh, variations uh, will be uh, tolerated. Question eight was, what happened at 8.47 p.m. on Tuesday, the 10th of July, 2018? And no, the answer wasn't, I passed my exams or I got my first car or my daughter left school. It was Anthony Murphy discovered Dronehenge. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, that has been mentioned a few times. Question nine. According to Laura Gowala, the Book of Invasions, who was the first person to arrive in Ireland? She was Kezair. C-E-S-S-A-I-R. -S -S Again, spelling, uh, different spellings will uh, not be marked down so long as it looks something like that. And question 10 was related. What famous biblical character was she related to? And that was Noah, as in the gentleman who built Noah's Ark. Question 11. The white quartz stones at Newgrange are said to have been brought to the monument from where? Well, if you gave the answer Wicklow or the Wicklow Mountains or County Wicklow, you would be right. Uh, question 12. In what year was the Mythical Ireland website established? It was established in the year 2000. The year 2000. And for a bonus point, if you wrote down March the 16th, you'll get a bonus point. I'm joking. Who is the author, question 13, of 32 words for field? That is our good friend, Moncon McGann. I would not expect, especially the non-natives, to be able to spell that. So again, spelling, so long as it looks like something like Moncon McGann uh, and his new book, uh, uh, Listen to the Land Speak, just released in the past week or so. Uh, question 14, in what year was St. Patrick said to have lit the Paschal fire in Ireland? I will accept any of the following, 431 AD, 432 AD, or 433 AD. Uh, I think 432 AD is the one that's widely accepted by the scholars. And where did he light it was question 15. And of course, that answer is the place where Tom King lives in the shadow of, uh, which is the Hill of Slain in County Meath, overlooking the great monuments of Brunavonia and with a line of sight to Tara. Question 16 was, who was the High King of Tara when the fire was lit? And the answer is Lera or Lera McNeil, Lera the son of Niall. Lera is spelled L-A-O-G-H-A-I-R-E. Again, you can give me variants upon that, you know. Um, yes. Who led the excavations of Nouth uh, is question 17. And that was, of course, the late Professor George Ogan, uh, who passed away only in the past year. Professor George Ogan led the excavations of Nouth. Question 18. My book about Newgrange, first published in 2012, was called Newgrange, blank, blank, blank. And the blanks are Monument to Immortality. Hopefully you all got that one right. Be very disappointed if you didn't. I'm joking. Question 19. What does the word Neolithic mean? It means New Stone Age. New Stone Age. What era, question 20, came immediately before the Neolithic, according to archaeologists, that is the Mesolithic or the Middle Stone Age, the Mesolithic, the hunter-gatherer era. Question 21 was, the Boyne rises in which county? The county is Kildare, the village is Carberry, the precise location is Trinity Well in the grounds of Newbury House, Carberry County, Kildare. 
Uh, question 22 was related. Most of the River Boyne's course is situated in which county? Of course, it is County Mead. Uh, most of the Boyne is in County Mead. Question 23. What prominent monument in Drogheda is believed in local folklore to be part of the Brunabonia complex? And the answer there is Millmount. Millmount in Drogheda. What famous bard, question 24 asks, is said to be interred beneath its great mound? And of course, that bard is Amergin Glungial. But if you just said Amergin, that's perfectly acceptable. A spiritual figurehead of the Milesians. Question 25 was the destruction of whose hostel was the subject of a four part live Irish myth series. And of course, that is Da Derga, the destruction of Da Derga's hostel. Again, if your spelling isn't exactly up to the mark, join a long list of middle aged scribes who are similarly unable to spell things consistently correctly. Question 26 was who was the healer or physician or the leech of the Tua de Dana? And the answer there is Dian Kecht. Sometimes spelt as one word, sometimes as Dian and Kecht with a fada on the E. So long as it's close, we will accept it. Question 27. What was the name of the great monster said to have been slain and dismembered at Newgrange? And the monster was, of course, the Mata. Mata. M-A-T-A. -A. But if your spelling is something like M-A-T-A-E or M-A-T-H-A, we will accept that. According to the Dinshanicus, how many heads did the monster have? Hold up some fingers there. Yeah, Tom has it. No, Josephine is wrong. Peter Kennedy is wrong. It's four. Four-headed monster. What was the name of the boy who killed the Hound of Cullen? If you wrote Ku Cullen, you were wrong. Because before he was Ku Cullen, he was Sitanta. Uh, and again, spellings S E Father T A N T A, Setanta. Who excavated the Four Knox Mounds in the 1950s? The correct answer there is P J Hartnett. And I do accept uh, that that's probably one of the diff more difficult questions. But again, me he's mentioned very regularly in my written work and on the live streams. I'm saying we've basically no excuse except for your memory. Uh, question 31 was kind of related. Uh, who began the excavations of the mound of the hostages at Tara, but did not complete them because he passed away? The answer there, Sean P. O'Reardon. Um, and I could have asked for a bonus question. Who completed the excavations? That would have been Rory de Valera. Question 32 was, how many curb stones does Newgrange have? I wanted a precise answer here. Uh, it's been mentioned so many times that it really should be uh, commonplace knowledge. 97 is the answer, 97. I will accept some uh, variation in the answers for the Nauth question 33. How many curb stones did Nauth originally have? Hint, three are missing. The original tally was 127, now 124. So if you had something in the 120s, we will probably accept that. What type of stone? Uh, are most of the curbs of Newgrange made from? And I would have accepted two different answers there. One is Grey Wacky, and its alternative name is Green Grit. If he said Muddy Shale, I'd probably accept it, but uh, Grey Wacky is the proper answer there. Where did these stones come from? Question 35 asked, and the hint was it's the name of a modern fishing village uh, on the coast of County Loudoun. That is Clower Head. Clower Head. 36, the best known of the cairns of Schlieve Nicalia at Loch Crewe is aligned towards the sunrise on what days? And of course, those days are the equinoxes, the spring and autumn equinoxes. What is the name of the cairn was question 37. Well, the cairn is labelled Cairn T on the archaeological maps, also known as the Hags Cairn. So if you had either of those, you got it right. Who excavated some of the Loch Crewe cairns in the 1960s? I mistakenly gave you the answer to that. Uh, two questions previously, uh, and that is Eugene Conwell. Eugene Conwell was the excavator of the, uh, some of the cairns of Loch Crew in the 1860s. 39, who, is, who was said in myth to have formed the Loch Crew cairns by dropping stones from her apron? And of course, that is the Kalyak or the Kalivira. Any variation of spelling there will be accepted. Question 40. Yes, some people celebrating there. What is the highest passage tomb in Northern Ireland? 
And that is the passage to him of Schlieve Gullion, Schlieve Gullion in the county of Armagh. Question 41 was related. What astronomical event does it point towards? Winter solstice sunset was the correct answer there. Question 41 was also related. What monuments does its passage point to? And I would accept one or other or both. Uh, and the answers are Cairn T at Loch Crew and Isle Namirin at Ishnock, the Stone of Divisions. If you, if you put down the cat stone, that's acceptable as well. Question 43, who is the legendary Scottish warrior woman who trained Cuchulain? And of course, her name is Scahawk. Scahawk, again, variations on spelling uh, are totally understandable. Question 44 was, in Tuchmark Etain, what implement was Elkmar wielding atop Sheedin Broga when Angus Og visited? And the correct answer was a fork of white hazel, a fork of white hazel. If you said a hazel rod, that would be acceptable. At what time of the year did this visit occur? Of course, the time which we're shortly coming up to when the veil between worlds is uh, uh, quite thin, and that is, of course, Samhain. Samhain. S-A-M-H-A-I-N is the correct spelling there, but we are a very, very tolerant of mistakes, as obviously the uh, bards in the uh, uh, scriptoria were. What was the name, question 46, what was the name of the pool in the River Boyne in which the Salmon of Knowledge was caught? Uh, you could have given it in English or Irish, Feox Pool or Lynn Fake. Feox Pool or Lynn Fake. Anything resembling those uh, will get a point. Question 47, who caught the Salmon of Knowledge? And if you said Finn McCool, you would have been wrong because who caught the Salmon of Knowledge was Finnegas the Druid or Finnegas. F-I-N-N-E-G-A-S, Finnegas the Druid caught the Salmon of Knowledge. And what was the original name of the boy who helped him cook it? Again, if you answered Finn McCool, you would have been wrong because his name before he uh, caught the Salmon was Jevna, uh, or uh, before he burnt his thumb on it. Jevna, again, that's D-E-M-N-E, -E, but variations on that are entirely uh, acceptable. Question 49, who was the American artist and researcher who wrote The Stones of Time? or sorry, the stars and the stones later reprinted as the stones of time. And his name is Martin Brennan, Martin Brennan. And question 50, in what year was the Brunabonia complex inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list? And the answer there is 1993, 1993. So at this point, uh, please feel free in the chat to let me know how you think you're getting on. If you did a tot up, let us know what your current score is and um, boast of John McHugh has 21 that's that is good going Joan that's very good um especially considering your technological um uh, issues um I'll just ask all to unmute there so you can all chat away for a couple of minutes before we take a break Pilar says 17 and a half that's pretty good going Helen has 15 yeah that's not bad at all not at all disrespectable Anybody else? Nobody wants to. It's okay. If you don't want to tell us, that's perfectly okay. I got 13. 13 is good. Yeah. 13. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Carol Bennett, you've got quite a few. Where are you? We have a 27. We also have a 29. Yeah, very good. Very good. Somebody has five. Hey. Hey. Uh, Exactly. <laughs> We're having fun here. This isn't about, uh, although I know some of you are going to say, Anthony, this is too hard. <laughs> I'm just listening. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's perfectly okay. So what I would propose that we do now is just for a couple of minutes, stretch the legs. Uh, don't disconnect. Uh, just leave it running. Turn off your camera if you want. Mute if you want. Go and stretch your legs. We will come back. It is 17 minutes past. It's 18 minutes past nine here. We will come back at 25 minutes past. That's seven minutes. Is that okay? Just if everybody wants to boil the kettle and get a cup of tea or stretch the legs or go to the lavatory. We'll do that now for a couple of minutes. And then there's only 50 more questions to come. <laughs> Great fun. Oh, I hope they're not as hard as the, oh, some of them are. Oh, God. Yeah, Carl. Uh, question, question 51 is immediately hard. <laughs> yes. All right. Anyway, come back. Please do come back in seven minutes. Um, More twos. It'd be interesting to see how many people watch this back on YouTube and do the 
and do do their own and see what score they get, you know. Anyway, it was a very good, as far as I'm concerned, this will be a very educational video and it does appear on YouTube. Like test your general knowledge of Irish mythology and archaeology and history and geography. OK, uh, I am going to vacate for a couple of moments. And I'll see you back here in a few. You got tea. Did you have, you have that one? Hope nobody minds on having some chocolate. Hmm. It's not even Christmas yet. <laughs> Thank Joan. Great minds think alike. You have to have something to keep you going, you know. What's my excuse anyway? This one, yes, this one. Lovely. Papa looks great anyway. Hi, Nora. These are all looking brilliant. <laughs> it's great to see everybody. Put faces oh, to all the names, isn't yeah, it? Lovely. I love it. I hope you're getting to plenty of warm sea to swim in these days. It's very mild for the time of year, isn't it? Oh, my God. Sunday, it was just heaven. Yeah. It, it, there was a few waves down there. And I find when there's waves and there's movement in the sea, it's just be lovely and warm. So, uh, yeah, I stayed in for ages, bopping up and down on these waves. It was just gorgeous. Lovely. You're very brave, Nora. I was in my element down there. <laughs> oh, dog wants to I know the last 
few weeks to eat it gone out of it completely. Oh my God, it was Baltic already. It was like, do you know what I mean? You're waiting the whole summer for it to heat up and then it goes like that, you know? Yeah. Which is interesting because the air temperatures are high. Yeah. You know, like we had um, 16, 18 degrees the last few days. Yeah, it was lovely. Very mild. But um, oh, it was gorgeous now. It was very funny. It was up in Armagh on Saturday and it was sunny in Drogheda when we left. And just as we crossed the border, it got cloudy and we got <laughs> to Armagh, it was raining. <laughs> and in the afternoon, when we left Armagh, it was raining. And when we got to the border, the sun came out. And when we got back to Drogheda, it was sunny again. So a Saturday's weather seems to have been against Ulster, definitely. It does that if you're driving from Belfast down and you get as far as um, Ballygawley. Normally it could be sun would be shining from Belfast to Ballygawley and then from Ballygawley home to Fermanagh, it is raining. <laughs> you can see it in the distance, it's dreadful. <laughs> did you get that bad thunder last week? Yeah, yeah, we did. Oh my, Lots of it. It went on all day. It was yeah. unreal. My it's God, still, was it was going at uh, after midnight. <laughs> Crazy. It hit one of our turbines out of the... I saw that. The back, yeah. yeah. Loads of little videos on them. Um, loads of videos on Facebook with it. Yeah, it was unseasonal. Apparently, that's not at all typical for October. No, we'd never get that now. When the water hits 80, I'll fly over and join you. <laughs> Come on <Yeah>. over. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay away from the turbines. <laughs> Grand. I remember being up on the hill of Tara with a tour, oh, probably four or five years ago. And it was one of those summer days where it was sunny, but there were big dark clouds. And um, it started to rain, and everybody put umbrellas up, and then there was lightning. And I was like, oh no, we're on the top of a <laughs> high hill. Do you mean? And we're all carrying umbrellas, and there's lightning. So I just said to everybody, if we can get off the hill as quickly as possible, that would be brilliant. <laughs> and if you can do without your umbrella, toss it away, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come back and get it later. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah, 20 people standing on the Hill of Tara acting like human lightning conductors, you know. Absolute. <laughs> Just asking for it to happen. <laughs> okay, I think we're just waiting for a few. It is 26 minutes past, so we will press on because I'm just conscious of the fact we have another 50 questions. I have to admit that um, okay. as the composer of the questions, um, I was very enthusiastic writing them all out. Um, and I'm kind of now realizing that, yeah, you know, some of it really would require specialist knowledge. Perhaps they are a little bit on the hard side. Perhaps I should have made Nile of the How Many Hostages, I think, was an easy one. You know, that kind of question. Um, but for instance, who excavated Four Knox? Um, you know, who was the in what year did Patrick light the Pascal fire? That sort of question, I understand. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, we'll press on regardless, it's not necessarily going to get any easier or more difficult. It's uh, probably not going to get any easier. <laughs> Apologies, yeah. Uh, in my enthusiasm, I was forgetting that uh, not everybody is reading this stuff every day of the year, like me. Complete. Anthony, you know? I think I think it I think it best to let people answer their or mark their own then because it saves them having to send it to me as well. It just makes it easier. Yeah. And then, I, think, yeah. I think we I think we can rely on every, everybody's honesty. Yeah. And uh, yeah. sure, we know nearly all the names and faces here today. In fairness, they're all uh, they're all long long time uh, viewers and and uh, followers and fans and uh, people who've been. Uh, it's a bit of crack, as they say. Yeah. People have been uh, <laughs> interfacing. Don't with be embarrassed. People. Don't be embarrassed. Okay, if we're all ready, I don't see... Not everybody's <laughs> camera is on, so that's okay. Um, Peter Kennedy, I think, maybe. Are you there, Peter? Are you away? He's there. Oh, he's there. Grand. Okay. Well, carry on. We'll carry on. We'll carry on. 
Question, this is round six, question 51. Whose laborers rediscovered, in quotes, rediscovered the passage and chamber of Newgrange in 1699? Whose laborers rediscovered the passage and chamber of Newgrange in 1699? A big hint there would be that he was a Scottish Presbyterian settler who came into the area. And uh, if you don't know his full name, the surname will do fine. Question 52. Who was given ownership of the Mound of Kletchuk after being evicted from Sheedinbroga slash Newgrange? Now, if you were paying attention, the answer to that was in one of the questions earlier. Question 52, who was given ownership of the Mound of Kletchuk after being evicted from Sheedinbroga or Newgrange? By what name in local folklore, asks question 53, was the satellite, sorry, the large satellite Mound of Newgrange Mound B known. By what name in local folklore was the large satellite mound of Newgrange Mound B known? I've done a YouTube video about this. I've written about it in my Mythical Ireland book and it has been uh, featured in, I think, more than one uh, Mythical Ireland blog post, if that helps. Question 54. What feature of the night sky is Bialach or Bohar na Bofina? What feature of the night sky is known in Irish as Balach Galach na Bofina or Bohar na Bofina. Question 55. According to my own theory, what constellation of the night sky is the Newgrange chamber modelled on? According to my own theory, what constellation of the night sky is the Newgrange chamber modelled on? And for the convenience, you can give either the, the Greek, the name of the constellation in Greek or in English. Question 56. What is the name of Angus's lover in the tale Ashlinga Angus-O? The dream vision of angus Og. What is the name of angus Og's lover in the tale Ashlinga Angus-O? And uh, again, variations on the spelling are completely okay. Question 57. Where was Angus Og fostered for the first years of his life? Where was Angus Og fostered for the first years of his life? That's question 57. I'll give you a hint on that one. I was there on Bilbury Sunday giving a talk. Uh, it's in County Longford. Um, not sure if that helps jog your memory, but I certainly have spoken about it plenty this year. And question 58 is related. Who was he fostered by? So 57, where was Angus Og fostered in the early years of his life? And question 58, who was he fostered by? And a hint there would be the, this is a character uh, from Tokmark Eitain, who would be married to Fulmnock, who we mentioned earlier. Question 59, who were the parents of Angus? Who were the parents of Angus? And of course, a hint there is that they are two uh, prominent figures of uh, the Tuatha de Danann, uh, prominent in the mythology of Brunabonia. Who were the parents of Angus Og? This one might seem tough, but I think I have mentioned it ad nauseum at this point. Uh, question 60. The king who ordered the building of doubt was Bresal Bodibad. Of course, this is a mythological king. The king who ordered the building of doubt was Bresal Bodibad. What does Bodibad mean? What does Bodibad mean? His epithet. It's a nickname. What does it mean? And that is uh, round six. So if you just want to, I'll very quickly go through those again. 51, whose laborers rediscovered the passage of uh, passage and chamber of Newgrange in 1699? Question 52, who was given ownership of the Mound of Kletchuk after being evicted from Sheedinbroga slash Newgrange? Of course, that's a mythological uh, figure, not a historical figure. Uh, question 53, by what name in local folklore was the large satellite mound of Newgrange, Mound B, known? And that's the one down on the floodplain of the Boyne, very close to the river in front of Newgrange. 
Question 54 was, what feature of the night sky is known in Irish as Bialach na Bófina or Bóhar na Bófina? Question 55, according to my own theory, what constellation of the night sky is the Newgrange chamber modelled on? Uh, and I'll take that in Greek or in English. 56, what was the name of Angus's lover in the tale Ashlinga Angus-o? Who was Angus's lover? Question 57, where was Angus Og fostered for the first years of his life? Where was Angus fostered in the early years of his life? And question 58 is related, who was he fostered by? Who was Angus fostered by uh, for the first years of his life? Uh, and this gentleman was married to uh, Fulmnach. Uh, I'm looking for the, I suppose, the foster father, as it were. Question 59 was, who were the parents of Angus? Who were the parents of Angus Og in the mythology of Brunabonia? And question 60 was, the king who ordered the building of doubt was Bresal Bodibad. What does Bodibad mean? And question 61, which is the first question of round seven, is related to that question. So we'd kick on with round seven. How many bulls and cows were left after the cattle famine of his time, according to myth? And this is the time of Bresal Bodibad. How many bulls and cows were left after the cattle famine of his time, according to mythology? So X bulls and X cows are kind of a two part answer. Question 62 is also related. What does Doubt's name Dua mean in English? Dua, D-U-B-H-A-D-H. What does Doubt's name Dua mean in English? There is a specific answer, but we will take uh, variations on the theme. If you're close, we'll accept it. And question 63 is also related. What happened to bring the endless day to an end in the Delft myth? So there was an endless day while the men were building the great tower or cairn. What happened to cause the ending uh, of that endless day. Question 64, uh, this one we've spoken a lot about in the past couple of years. What was unusual about the DNA profile of the man called NG10, whose genome was sequenced in 2020? This is uh, the gentleman who was there's Coda giving out about these questions being too tough. Uh, what was unusual about the DNA profile of the man called NG10? He, uh, he had been buried in Newgrange 5,200 years ago, whose genome was sequenced in 2020. What did the scientists reveal about that man that was buried in Newgrange that was highly unusual? Question 65. Who led the excavations of some of the cairns at Carrow Keel, County Sligo in 1911. I'm looking for a specific name there. Who led the excavations of some of the cairns at Carrow Keel in County Sligo in 1911? A very, very well known name in Irish archeology span and in mythology because he did also translate a lot of texts. Question 66 is related. His friend and co-excavator, Robert Lloyd Prager, wrote which book? His friend and co-excavator, Robert Lloyd Prager, wrote which book? I will admit that's a slight tough, tough one. So question 65, who led the excavations of some of the cairns at Carrow Keel, County Sligo in 1911? And question 66, his friend and co-excavator, Robert Lloyd Prager, wrote which book? Question 67, what is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for? What is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for? A clue would be that it is in a very rocky place. <laughs> it's megalithic, of course it's rocky, uh, but you get what I mean. It's in a very uh, stony landscape. Big clue there, by the way. 
Question 68 is related. What was unusual about the DNA profile, profile of a boy interred there? So question 67, what is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for, located in a very stony place? And question 68, what was unusual about the DNA profile of a boy who was buried there? Oh, okay, I'll take a decade rather than a specific year for this. It's probably a bit tough in fairness. Uh, question 69, Newgrange is a name derived from the Cistercian presence in the area in what year was Mellifont Abbey founded? But I will take the decade. What Newgrange is a name derived from the Cistercian presence in the area, uh, the Cistercians who founded Mellifont Abbey. In what year, I will take the decade, was Mellifont Abbey founded? And this is also a tough one, unless you're really up on your Irish history. It's also related. Question 70, in what year was the Treaty of Mellifont signed? In what year was the Treaty of Mellifont signed? There's nothing in any of these questions that hasn't either been featured on live streams or in one of my books or in one of my blog posts. Um, that one is a little bit, yeah, that I will say that was a bit tough. Again, I'll take the decade on that one. So a quick run through round seven questions. Question 61, how many bulls and cows were left after the cattle famine? of uh, Bressel Bodibad's era, according to myth. Question 62, what does Doubt's name Dua mean in English? Question 63, what happened to bring the endless day to an end in the Doubt myth? 64, what was unusual about the DNA profile of the man called NG10, buried in Newgrange over 5,000 years ago, whose genome was sequenced in 2020? Question 65, who led the excavations of some of the cairns at Carrow Keel in Sligo in 1911? Question 66, his friend and co-excavator, Robert Lloyd Prager, wrote which book? Question 67, what is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for? Now, I'm not looking for the date, I'm looking for the name of the monument. What is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for? 68, what was unusual, unusual about the DNA profile of a boy who was buried there? Question 69, Newgrange is a name derived from the Cistercian presence in the area. In what year or decade was Mellifont Abbey established? I have to let one of the dogs out. In what year was the Treaty of Mellifont signed was question seven. And I will probably have to let her back in again in a few minutes. So that's uh, round seven. We're motoring uh, fast now. Um, I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to ask, in, when I'm giving out the answers, I'm going to ask specifically, did people get the answer to some of these? There were a few toughies in there, a few tough ones, a few difficult ones, in fairness. Absolutely, there were. No doubt about it. Okay, some of you are saying, bring it on. And some of you are saying, no. Computer, computer says no. <laughs> okay, round number eight. So the third last of our rounds, question 71, which is related to the previous question. Question 70 was, what, in what year was the Treaty of Mellifont signed? Question 70, the next few questions are all related. What war came to an end as a result of the signing of the Treaty of Mellifont? What war came to an end as the result of the signing of the treaty. Anne Scott Doherty knows the answer. She's fairly confident there. Yeah, good stuff. She may not be the only one. Several people writing. Some people look like they're asleep. That's okay. Who was, the, <laughs> I'm joking. Question 72, who was Earl Tyrone, one of the signatories? What was he better known as? The Earl of Tyrone, who was one of the signatories to uh, the Treaty of Mellifont in the year uh, what was he? What was he? What was he better known as? And question seventy-three, also related. Which royal English royal did he submit to? Which English royal did he submit to when he signed the Treaty of Mellifont? Um, 
and if you're some of you will know these answers some of your scratch i'll give you a sort of a broad um hint which is that this is the era that began the flight of the earls and uh, the beginning of really the plantations the plantation of ulster um so hopefully that may be help you um in your answers question 74 is related again and this is uh, i think when i heard this i thought this was fascinating what was unusual about her condition at the time the treaty was signed so question 73 was which english royal did he submit to obviously we're looking for a female uh and so question 74 what was unusual about her condition at the time the treaty was signed I was half expecting to see some wry smiles there for that one. I, I'm sure if you don't know the answer to that, it will blow you away when we get to it. Question 75. A giant megalithic monument at Carnbeg near Dundalk was recorded by antiquarian Thomas Wright in 1748. Uh, I should add that it was destroyed completely between then and now. By what name do archaeologists call this monument? This is one I have written lots about in Island of the Setting Sun, in Mythical Ireland, on my blog. Um, Kerem Gogus uh, created some 3D models of this monument. This is not Drone Henge. Uh, it's another monument. A giant megalithic monument at Carnbeg near Dundalk was recorded by antiquarian Thomas Wright in 1748, uh, and it has been destroyed since then. By what name do archaeologists call this monument? Ah. ah you'll all get the answer to question 76 which is can you visit this monument today because i just gave the answer away <laughs> so again anthony just read the question don't I, I, don't give any extra information can you visit this monument today that's a yes or no uh answer a yes or no answer no answer <clears throat> Uh, question 77 is also related. The monument was described by histor hist historian Henry Morris as a school of what? The monument was described by historian Henry Morris as a school of what? If your answer is meditation, you're wrong. So don't even go there. Question 78. Which well-known photographer and archaeological researcher, Irish, that is, recently discovered megalithic art on one of the stones of the Grange Stone Circle in Loch Gur, County Limerick, which well-known photographer and archaeological researcher recently discovered megalithic art on one of the stones of Grange Stone Circle, Loch Gur, County Limerick. Uh, and a hint there would be he is a good friend of Mythical Ireland's uh, and was in my company uh, uh, on uh, at 8.47 p.m. on Tuesday, the 10th of July, 2018. Question 79, if that doesn't give it away, nothing will. In 2018, the Georgian country house at Douth Hall, which was built in the 18th century before the Netterville family, was found to have been built on top of what? In 2018, the Georgian country house at Douth Hall which was built in the 18th century for the Netterville family, was found to have been built on top of what? And the answer there is not the ground, just in case you were thinking. <laughs> and question 80, the last question in round eight, the OPW runs visitor services at the Brunabonia Monuments. What does OPW stand for? The OPW runs visitor services at the Brunabonia Monuments. What does OPW stand for? Hope we're all having fun. Very quickly, uh, round eight questions again. Question 71, what war came to an end as a result of the signing of the Treaty of Maliphant? Question 72, who was Earl Tyrone or the Earl of Tyrone, one of the signatories? What was he better known as? Question 73, which English royal did he submit to? 
Question 74, what was unusual about her condition at the time the treaty was signed? 75, a giant megalithic monument at Carnbeg near Dundalk was recorded by antiquarian Thomas Wright in 1748. Uh, by what name do archaeologists call this monument? Question 76, can you visit this monument today? Yes or no? Um, the monument was described by historian Henry Morris as a school of what? A school of what? And no, it wasn't archaeology. Which, because he was talking about when it was built in ancient times, what it was a school of, hint, hint. Question 78, which well-known photographer and archaeological researcher and a good friend of Mythical Ireland recently discovered megalithic art in one of the stones of Grange Stone Circle, Loch Gur, County Limerick? Question 79, in 2018, the Georgian country house at Douth Hall, which was built in the 18th century for the Netterville family, was found to have been built on top of what? And question 80, the OPW runs visitor services at the Brunabonia Monuments. What does OPW stand for? Okay. If we are good, I will proceed. We are on 11 minutes to 10 p.m. here. We're doing good for time. And uh, there will be time for chat and banter afterwards. I'll leave the meeting open if we want to have a chat and discuss some of the questions and some of the near misses and congratulate the winners, of course. Um, OK, we'll start with question 81, if everybody's good to go. Good stuff. In 1999. Oh, God, that's a tough one. Oh, jeez. Right. OK, fair enough. This is a tough one. In 1999, I discovered the winter solstice alignment of the Baltre standing stones with two others. Name one of the others. In 1999, I discovered the winter solstice alignment of the Baltre standing stones with two others. Can you name one of the others? Do you know what? I'll take just a first name if you can't think of first and second names. That is a hard question. If you haven't read Island of the Setting Sun and uh, my Drone Henge book, and you haven't read the Baltre page on the Mythical Ireland website, you won't know that. Question 82, who is the famous Irish storyteller who caused a road to be rerouted around a fairy tree? Who is the famous Irish storyteller who caused a road to be rerouted around a fairy tree? Major hint is that he was the very first guest on our series of live Irish myths in conversation during the lockdowns. Question 83, which really bright star would have been visible from the chamber of Newgrange when it was built? Which really bright star, emphasis on the word star, not the sun, of course, would have been visible from the chamber of Newgrange when it was built? And a related question is question 84, which planet was said in folklore to be visible in the chamber of Newgrange once in eight years. So those two questions again, question 83, which really bright star would have been visible from the chamber of Newgrange when it was built? And question 84, which planet was said in folklore to be visible in the chamber of Newgrange once in every eight years? In both those cases, uh, there is, uh, there is a two different names as it were for the objects we're talking about. So I'll take either in both cases. Or if you want to show off, give both. Question 85, name two of the four mysterious objects said to have been brought to Ireland by the Tua de Danon. Name two of the four mysterious objects said to have been brought to Ireland by the Tua de Danon. Slightly tough one there. Um, slightly. Do you know if I think if 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 you get one, give yourself half a point. Um, question 86, 
two of what animal were kept in, in Newgrange by Dagda, one cooking on a spit and the other fattened for the slaughter. Two of what animal were kept in Newgrange by Dagda, one cooking on a spit and the other fattened for the slaughter. Question 87. The two bulls in the Irish saga, Toyn Bo Coilnge, are Don Coilnge and Blank. Can you name the white bull? Two bulls in the Irish saga, Toyn Bo Coilnge, are Don Coilnge, the brown bull of Cooley, and Blank. Can you name the white bull? Approximate answers will be accepted there, especially in terms of the spelling. Question 88. Who were the first Milesian kings who divided Ireland into two territories, one ruling the north and the other the south? Who were the first Milesian kings who divided Ireland into two territories, one ruling the north and the other the south? Who was, question 89, who was the foster mother of the god Lou? Who was the foster mother of the god Lou? Now, I don't think I'm spoiling any uh, future questions by giving you a clue, which is that he inaugurated uh, an Enoch, some games in her honour. The Enoch of blank, same name. Question 90. Which constellation appears to, quote unquote, carry the sun across the sky at summer solstice? In other words, if there was a total eclipse of the sun on summer solstice, which constellation would appear to be carrying the sun across the sky? There's a clue there. It's a person. It's a constellation based on the figure of a person. It's not a, a, a creature as such or a monster or a beast. It's a person. What is the name of this very, very famous, very well-known constellation? Anyway, just to recap, uh, this is round nine. I'll just read again those questions very quickly if you want to recap or if you missed a couple and you were open for a second chance. Number 81, in 1999, I discovered the winter solstice alignment of the Baltre standing stones with two others. Name one of the others. Question 82, who's the famous Irish storyteller who caused a road to be rerouted around a fairy tree? And we've had him as a guest on the Live Irish Myths in Conversation series. Question 83, which really bright star would have been visible from the chamber of Newgrange when it was built? And I will take one of two possible names for that star. Which planet is question 84, was said in folklore to be visible in the chamber of Newgrange once every eight years? And again, I will take one of two possible. Uh, names for that planet. Question 85, name one of the, sorry, name two of the four mysterious objects said to have been brought to Ireland by the Tua de Danon. Question 86, two of what animal were kept in Newgrange by the Dagda, one cooking on a spit and the other fattened for the slaughter? Question 87, the two bulls in the Irish saga, Toynbo Coolinga, are Don Coolinga and blank, name the white bull. Question 88, who were the first Milesian kings who divided Ireland into two territories, one ruling the north and the other the south? Question 89, who was the foster mother of the god Lou, in whose honour he, he uh, inaugurated the games, the Enoch of the name of this lady? Question 90 was, which constellation appears to carry the sun across the sky at summer solstice? And we are, of course, talking about in the modern era, not in prehistory. Today, in like June of 2023, on the longest day of the year, if you were to blank out the sun, which constellation would appear to be carrying the sun? And then we're into the final round of the evening, and uh, not too far shy of two hours. So I think we're, we've done well time-wise. Question 91, which high king was gifted the silver branch brought from the other world by Mananon MacLear? And we did feature that in at least two live streams. Uh, which high king of Tara, of course, was gifted the silver branch brought from the other world by Mananon MacLear? 
I'll just add in of Tara, just in case it wasn't explicit and it isn't explicit. It's only implicit. Uh, question 92. According to the annals, now I'm not talking about specific annals because this is mentioned in the Four Masters and Ulster and others, who raided the tombs of Brunebonia in the ninth century AD? And we're not looking for a specific name, we're rather looking for a group of people who, according to the annals, raided the tombs of Brunebonia in the ninth century AD, the 800s. Question 93. Uh, for the uh, those who are paying very close attention, uh, those who are Monty Python fans, the archaeologist who excavated Newgrange was Michael J. O'Kelly. By what first name was he known to family and friends? And the answer is not Michael. The archaeologist who excavated Newgrange was Michael J. O'Kelly. By what first name was he known to family and friends? Question 94, which friend of Mythical Ireland featured on at least two podcasts wrote the books, A Legacy of Wisdom and Call to Crone? Which friend of Mythical Ireland wrote the books, A Legacy of Wisdom, which is about the two of the Danon, and Call to Crone? The next one is, as far as I'm concerned, easy. I hope you also find it easy. Question 95. Name the husband and wife team who excavated Newgrange Farm at Newgrange Farm and Bobeck Monastery in recent years. Name the husband and wife team who excavated at Newgrange Farm and Bobeck Monastery in recent years, uh, featured prominently a, in a film uh, made last year. Uh, and uh, one of them has been a guest on my conversation series, and they, they both get mentioned. Uh, his book about medieval Ireland was featured on my book talk series. You should know. If you don't know, you, you, you need to uh, start watching from, series, from episode one again. Uh, question 96. Who did the Tua de Danon defeat at the second battle of Moitura? Who did the Tua de Danon defeat at the second battle of Moitura. And question 97 is related. Who was the leader of their enemies? Who was the leader of the defeated army? So 96, who did the Tua de Danon defeat at the second battle of Moitura? And 97, who was their leader? Who was the leader of the defeated uh, army, the enemies of the de Danons? Getting close to the finish now. Question 98, what? giant cairn sits atop the mountain of Knocknaray in County Sligo. What giant cairn, give me the name of it, sits atop the mountain of Knocknaray in County Sligo? Question 99. Almost there. Give the names of the two men who are the prehistory guys. Great friends of Mythical Ireland. Uh, they have appeared on my live stream and I have appeared on theirs. Give the names of the two men who are the prehistory guys. And question 100, the last question of the evening. Some of you will be absolutely, totally relieved. Oh God, when is this going to end? Apart from curb one, which two other curb stones at Newgrange are heavily decorated? Apart from curb one, which two other curb stones of Newgrange are heavily decorated? I gave part of the answer away at the beginning of the live stream. There you go. That is question 100 of 100 questions. Please take your time. If anybody wants me to repeat a question or a group of questions, now is the time to ask. I'd be very happy to do that. Uh, otherwise, what I will be shortly proposing 
is that I ask the questions again and that if you know the answer, you shout it out uh, or you give the answer that you gave. Let's just have a chat, as it were, uh, rather than. Um, we'll see. I'd be, I'd be interested in particularly in a few of those questions to see if anybody got them right. There were in, in some cases, one or two of those questions were extremely uh, obscure in terms of you'd want to really have been paying exceptional attention during class. OK, is everybody all right? Is everybody finished? Has everybody got all their answers? Peter says, oh my God, I'm so rusty. <laughs> You're probably not that bad, Peter, I'd say. You'd probably you'd be surprised. Uh, you, uh, some of these will be probably, you probably say, no, this is on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't get it. And when I say it, you go, oh, that's it, of course. Some of the some of the precise answers, the years and things. Uh, yeah, they can be interesting. Okay. Um, I'm just going to ask you all to unmute there so that we can basically, I'll ask the question, I'll just repeat the questions again and uh, maybe just shout out what answer you gave. Um, more interaction here. Uh, and maybe just talk up your scores and uh, send them to Sue so that at least we'll know, we'll be able to identify a winner. Uh, by the way, Josephine Weatherford left. Uh, Josephine was one of the clear leaders. Um, but she has left, um, thereby forfeiting the opportunity, unfortunately, uh, because she was doing very well. She had 29 uh, out of 50 in the first uh, section. So I'm not sure if anybody was able to beat that, but that was certainly the, the highest score that I had seen in, in the chat. Um, anyway, I'll run through these and uh, maybe we'll, uh, if you know the answer, shout it out and we'll give you a bula bus. Uh, question 51 was, whose labourers rediscovered the passage and chamber of Newgrange in 1699? Somebody will know that. Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Who said Campbell? What? Another Campbell. Sorry. Yeah. Another Campbell. <laughs> There's Paul Campbell. Yeah. Uh, the correct answer was Charles Campbell. Um, but as I said earlier, I will accept uh, just the surname. Um, so if you answered... Charles Campbell or Campbell, you get you get the answer. Um, if, if a lot of you are muted, if you want to unmute, please do and and shout out what answer you gave. Um, we'll have a bit of fun now because it's less serious now that the quiz is over. <laughs> Question fifty two: Who was given ownership of the Mound of Kletchuk after being evicted from Sheedenbroga or Newgrange? Nothing. Uh, that's acceptable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nechton is another name for Elkmar. Uh, Elkmar or Nechton, I should have actually noted that in the answers. Uh, Nechton is entirely acceptable. Thank you. Um, uh, Carol got that one right. Question 53, by what name in local folklore was the large satellite mound of Newgrange, Mound B, known? Atlas. Yep, who said that? Joan, was it? John. Who was that? Definitely a female voice. Um, dog does mount is exactly right. <clears throat> Question 54. What feature of the night sky is Baloch na Finna or Boher na Finna? Milky Way. The Milky Way, Nora, absolutely 100% right. And uh, like that, at the point, at the, I'm at the point of repeating that ad nauseum. So I, I, I do think anybody who's watched the live stream should know that. According to my own theory, what constellation of the night sky is the Newgrange chamber modeled on? Cygnus. Cygnus is correct. Uh, and of course, the alternative answer there is the swan. Cygnus, the swan constellation. What is the name of Angus's lover in the tale Ashlinga Angus? Care. Care is 100% right. Thank you, Don Carol. Uh, where, question 57 was, where was Angus Ogue fostered for the first years of his life? Really? Relay, 100% right, Joan. Well done. And who was he fostered by was question 58. Major. Major is exactly right. I don't know who that was. Me again. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think a leader is emerging. <laughs> question 59. Who were the parents of Angus? Oh, Anne and Dagda. Yeah, Dagda and Bowen. 100% right. 
I've done Bowen, yep. Yeah. And question 60 was, the king who ordered the building of Douth was Bressel Bodibad. What does Bodibad mean? Something to do with cows. Yeah. Cows are bulls. Definitely something to do with cows. It's like a famine wastage. White, white cow? Anya, oh, yeah, I would take that answer about famine wastage. Um, uh, it literally means lacking in cattle. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, and again, the next question was related to that. Question 61, how many bulls and cows were left after the cattle famine of his time? That's why he was called Bressel Bodibad, because there was a cattle disease or a famine in his time, which left how many bulls and how many cows left? Seven. Seven of each. Seven cows. How many bulls? Five. One. One. Yeah. So uh, if you got either of those right, give yourself a point. If you got both right, give yourself two points. One bull and seven cows. Uh, what does Doubt's name Dua mean in English? Black. Black. Oh, we'll take that. I will take Dirk. that. Yeah. Yay, I got one. Who was that? <laughs> Dark, Michael. Uh, yeah, but dar darkness or darkening. Um, so anything to do with darkness, darkening, shadow, blackness, I would take as an answer. What happened to bring the endless day to an end in the Douth myth? Incest. Correct. The king yeah. incest with his sister. Well remembered, Nora. Exactly. Question 64 was, what was unusual about the DNA profile of the man called NG10, whose genome was sequenced in 2020? Dark Is skin and blue eyes. Interbred. Yeah. No, no, he wasn't, wasn't, wasn't to do with the colour of his skin and his eyes. Okay. Interbred. He was interbred. Oh, interbred. Oh, it was his yeah. relation to his partner. First degree relation to his mother. Yes, exactly. Uh, Martin, okay. Martin Dyer. Um, he had first degree incestual parentage. Uh, most likely brother and sister. Who led the excavations of some of the cairns at Carrow Keel in Sligo in 1911? Eugene Conwell, was it? No, that's not true. That's good. That's sweet. a good answer, but it's not right. Not a clue, but sweet man. I, I did also say that he he translated some of the the myths. Oh, Hogan. No, McAllister. McAllister. Yes, who said that was that? Carol. Carol. Or A S McAllister. I would take McAllister. Or A S McAllister was the right answer there. His friend and co-excavator Robert Lloyd Prager wrote which book? And we featured this on an episode of Book Talk. Yeah, that was probably a tough one. The book is called The Way That I Went. Oh. It was followed up with a tribute by Professor Mitchell, Frank Mitchell, years later, decades later, a book called The Way That I Followed. But Prager's book was The Way That I Went. Question 67. What is the oldest Neolithic monument in Ireland that we have a date for? Ulnabron. Ulnabron, correct, which is located that in. That one's Ireland. right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Aaron is doing the victory <laughs> dance again. Yes, uh, the Burren, uh, which is the stony place. And the date for that is 3700 BC, or mm. five centuries before New England. What a related question, 68. What was unusual about the DNA profile of a boy who was buried in Ulnabron? The Down syndrome. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, brilliantly yeah. remembered. He had Down syndrome. Yeah. Newgrange is a name derived from the Cistercian presence in the area. In what year was Maliphant Abbey founded? If somebody knows the year, 1142. Yes. <laughs> 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 Why I remember these things, I don't know. <laughs> Brilliant. In what year, question 70 asks, was the Treaty of Maliphant signed? Michelle Woodburn is answering, but you're muted, Michelle. Unmute there. 1907. <laughs> did you say 1607? We can give you that because I did say if you could get the decade, we would give it to you. The actual year was 1603. Oh. But you were out by just four years. What war? I know some of you know this because I could see the facial expressions. What war came to an end as the result of the signing of the Treaty of Maliphant? Oh. Surprisingly, we have silence now. <laughs> I thought somebody knew that. 
Not with the boy. No. <laughs> no. It been to do with Elizabeth. Patricia's got it. At the end of the same century. That would have been Queen Elizabeth. That was... Yeah. Patricia's got it. She's mated. She... What war came to an end? It was the war that was known as the Nine Years' War. Mm. Yeah. Who was Earl Tyrone, one of the signatories of the Treaty of Malifant? Hugh O'Neill. O'Neill is correct. I think that was Michael Pike, was it? Yeah. And which English... Sorry, somebody else had that. Apologies if I'm missing people here. Which English royal did he submit to? Somebody's already said it. Liz Queen Elizabeth or Elizabeth I. Now, this is brilliant. What was no. her, about her condition at the I time? Have, the I have a, a point to make. Yes, Turns sir. out that the Queen Mother of Elizabeth II was called Elizabeth I. So now I'm confused about which Elizabeth we call the Queen Elizabeth in history. Yeah, actually, good question. Um, was, uh, I, I, know, I know the answer to that. Elizabeth Elizabeth the first, as in the Tudor daughter of Henry the Eighth and Anne Boleyn, was actually a ruling monarch, whereas Elizabeth, the Queen Elizabeth the Second's mother, was not a ruling monarch. She was just right. a support. Yeah, she was just known as Queen Consort or Queen or Queen Mother then when it became Queen Mother. She wasn't, she wasn't the ruling. Her her husband was actually was ruler. the ruler. Right. He was the yes. royal head, as opposed to his wife Elizabeth the first Elizabeth. Who was the queen? Edward the, the seconds. So, what was unusual about Elizabeth's condition at the time the treaty was signed? She dead. Legend. She was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and she was. Nobody had told <laughs> the poor Earl of Tyrone. You all knew. Uh, historians say that it wouldn't wouldn't have made much difference. You know, <laughs> the end was nigh, as it were. <laughs> Uh, uh, she was dead. Bring out your dead. I'm not dead yet. You will be in a minute. A giant megalithic monument at Carn Lake near Dundalk was recorded by antiquarian Thomas Wright in 1748. And what name do archaeologists call this monument? It was a Stonehenge. Ireland Very Stonehenge. Close. Say again. Ireland Stonehenge. 100% right. Ireland yeah. Stonehenge. Ireland Stonehenge, yeah. Can you visit this monument today? No. no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a hard one, that one. <laughs> um, Peter, I think it's your microphone is making an awful lot of noise. Do you mind if I just mute you there for a second? Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, no bother. Sorry about that. Um, uh, question 77. The monument was described by historian Henry Morris as a school of what? Astronomy. Droids. Yes, Anya Ryan, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> and she scores a goal. Yeah, the School of Astronomy. Which well known photographer and archaeological researcher recently discovered megalithic art in one of the stones, Grange Stone Circle, Loch Gur? Ken Anthony Williams. Ken Williams is 100% right. Oh, ben Williams. <laughs> well done uh, on Gaba. Gets there. Is that one out of 78 you have so far? <laughs> <laughs> Two. Are you doing better than that, I'm sure? Yes, I will know. <laughs> uh, 79, in 2018, the Georgian country house at Douth Hall, which was built in the 18th century for the Netterville family, was found to have been built on top of what? A mound. A cairn. A cairn. I, would take, I would take a cairn, a cairn or a passage tomb. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And question 80, the OPW runs visitor services at the Bruno Bonia Monuments. What does OPW stand for? Office, Office of Public, Public Works. Public Works. Office of Public Works. Office of, what did somebody say there? Office of Rex. Public Works. Rex. Rex. Public <laughs> Rex. Rex. No <laughs> politics now. Office of Prehistoric Rex. <laughs> oh. Office of Public Works is the correct answer. Yeah. Uh, question 81 was one of the toughest of the whole quiz. In 1999, I discovered the winter solstice alignment of the Baltray standing stones with two others. Name one of the others. Richard Moore. Richard Moore is 100% right on. Uh, the third one, because he's a quiet fella and he doesn't do publicity, uh, would be very little known. But the third name there on that list, uh, well, the second name, would be Michael Byrne. Michael Byrne. Oh, yeah. 
Michael was a photographer. He is a photographer. Um, question 82, I think everybody should have got right. Who is the mm-hmm. famous Irish storyteller who caused a road to be rerouted around a fairy tree? Eddie Linehan. Eddie. Our good friend, Eddie. The ledge. The ledge. The ledge, the ledge ball, Eddie. 83 was which really bright star would have been visible in the chamber at New Grange when it was built? Venus. Nope. Mars. Star. Sirius. Sirius. Correct. The dog ah. star. <laughs> or the dog star. Uh, the next question was which planet was said in oh. folk to be visible in the chamber of New Grange once in every eight years? Venus. Mars. Venus. 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 If you wanted to call it the morning star, yeah. Okay. 85, slightly tough. Uh, name two of the four mysterious objects said to have been brought to Ireland by the two of the Danon. The Stone of Destiny. The All Stone, no. No. The Fragment. Leofoil or the Stone of Destiny is one answer. Yeah, that's the thing. The, the, the Spear of Lou. Spear of Lou. Heart of Sadness. The Heart of Lou. No. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. Between us, we've got all the answers. So if you got any two of those, um, Leofoil or the Stone of Destiny, the Spear of Lou, Sword of Nuadu or Nuada, and Dog Dust Cauldron. Yeah. Uh, 86, two of what animal were kept in New Grange by Dogda? One cooking on a spit and the other fattened for the slaughter. The pig? Pigs. 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 Right, Peter. Pig, yeah. Yes. Everyone. Right. Um, the two bulls uh, are Dumb, Coolinga, and Blank. Who was the white bull in Tommy Bow, Coolinga? Binbenach. Binbenach. Binbenach, yeah. It literally means the white horned, the bright horned. Well done, Danny, when I got that. 88. Who were the first Milesian kings who divided Ireland into two territories, one ruling north and one ruling south? Heber and Heberman. I would, I would take, I mean, because there are so many variations. Eremon, 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 yeah. Eber, Finn, Eber, you know, I would take variations on those. Uh, question 89 was who was the foster mother of the god of Lou? Taltu. Taltu or Taltu. Uh, exactly right. Question 90 which constellation appears to carry the sun across the sky at summer solstice? Orion. 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 Yes, it is. That's in the modern era, of course. And in the last round, question 91. Which High King of Tara was gifted the silver branch brought from the other world by Mananon MacLear? Cormac, is it? Cormac MacArt. Yes. You shouldn't, doubt, you shouldn't doubt yourself so much, Peter. You no, me? well done. Deadly. According to the annals, who raided the tombs of Brunaboni in the 9th century? Vikings. The Vikings. Yes, it The archaeologist who excavated New Grange was Michael J. O. Kelly. By what first name was he known to family and friends? Brian. Brian. Who said that? Right. Michael. <laughs> the life of Brian. That's what tipped me off. The life of Brian. Name's Brian. <laughs> And he's a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're all individuals. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what have the Romans done for us? <laughs> <laughs> Which friend of mythical Ireland wrote the books A Legacy of Wisdom and A Call to Crone? Matthew and Geraldine Stout. No, that's the next. Oh, oh. Like burning and down. Gabriel Taylor. Say again. Oh. The Martina. Gabriella Taylor. Can't hear. Michelle is trying to tell me something. Taylor. Gabri- yes. Gabriella Taylor. No. It's Morgan. The answer. I'm afraid the correct answer is Judith mm-hmm. and Myla. Oh, yeah, I tell. Myla. Mm. And we now know the answer to question 95. Name the husband and wife team who excavated Newgrange Farm and Boba. Oh, Matthew and Geraldine Stout. Ah, there. Uh, I, was, I was early. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who did, question 
question 96 who did the Tuatha Dé Danann defeat at the second battle of Moitura? The Morians. The Morians? Yep. Boo. Boo. <laughs> question 97 who was the leader of the Fomorians? In Dr. Dumnan. Was it? John. Balor of the Evil Eye. Evil Eye. Balor, or, or Balor of the Evil Eye, or Balor of the Stout Blows, I would there accept. What giant cairn sits atop the mountain of Pontnere in County Sligo? Maeve's cairn. Maeve's cairn. Maeve's cairn is 100%. Eric Give the names of the two men who are the prehistory guys. Michael Hi. and Rupert. I will accept. Rupert. Right. Names. Rupert and Michael. Yeah, Michael Bott and Rupert Suskin. And the last but not least question, apart from curb one, which two other curb stones at Newgrange are heavily decorated? Sixteen and nine. One or three? So we gave we gave the answer at the very beginning. Yeah. This is sixty-nine. Slightly slight clue. It's curb sixty-seven pendant. Seven sixty-seven. And what was the other one? One or three. This is the one that's directly at the back of New Grange, directly in line with the axis of the passage. 19. No. 52. 52 is exactly right. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sparks got 40 in total and it has to leave, unfortunately. No, well, that's okay. Uh, people have things to do. That's a, that's a pretty good score, I think. Um, anybody? Uh, I'm taking you all totted up at this stage. Anthony? Yes. This is Karen. Hello, Karen. Um, an interesting point about Paul Um <clears throat> In the little <clears throat> arrow, they have this bar right at the entrance to where you walk in there that has a timeline. You know, Christopher Columbus and so on. And on the timeline, it has the O'Loughlin uh, L-shaped keep that is not far away. So my husband's family since 15 something and then somebody else had it for a few years and then they, the O'Loughlin's got it back and ended up giving it to the Irish Trust in 48 or whenever they levied all those taxes. But I was like so shocked to see, it's called Glenina. And I was so shocked to see it, and I was kind of thrilled. What is it called? Glenina, G L E N N. Glen Anya, uh, is it like as in the Glen of Anya? What? Glen of Anya, is it Anya? No, Glenina, N A G H or C H. Glenina. And I Enough. was calling it something else, and somebody, I ran into a student who had done some repair on it, and he said, no, the name is Glenina. Glenina. And it's hidden away down right on the uh, Galway Bay, of course, on the southern side. Um, <laughs> And very hard to find. You have to go down this windy, steep dirt road. But we found it. And I think there might be a holy well there too, but there is a well. So ah, interesting. Yeah. But but to see it written on this sign that had six or seven things, like we were bowled over. Yeah. As well as being bowled over by the beauty of Blumet Brown. Yeah. Uh. Ireland is uh, uh, just like that. Uh, lots of treasures down windy, narrow country roads. Some of the best things are to be found hidden away. Um, I wonder, um, I'm just reading in the, this, the text, Carol Barrett has 54. Um, I'm, I'm, according to what I can see, that's the best score so far. Anybody beat 54? Gorda. Doug did. <laughs> Joan has 48. Yes, then. Uh, Peter has 52 and a half. 100. 
me just Coda one. Yeah, Coda. <laughs> Peeler has to run. Okay. Uh I, I understand we've been gone on for nearly two and a half hours now, and I do apologize for that. Um Joan <laughs> was about 48. And um who was the other was Carol? What was Carol? <laughs> So unless anybody has any objection, unless anybody can beat 54, no. two and a half, 48, I will declare Carol Barrett the winner of the quiz, uh, <laughs> who wins first prize of hey, that's great. pendant. I will announce Peter Kennedy as the second prize winner, a 50 euro voucher for Mythic Ireland, and Joan McHugh third. The third. And Joan wins a Mythical Ireland 2023 calendar. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Too. Brilliant. Well done. Brilliant. Well done. Great. That so was. enjoyed that. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Good fun. Well done. Thank Thanks so much, work. Anthony. That's a lot of work putting that all together. Absolutely. Yeah. I know we've been planning to do it for months and months. We were supposed to do that last year, but. Uh, I just said, just sit down and write down a hundred questions. My my dogs are barking at yours. They can hear them. <laughs> <coughs> Believe it or not, it's not my dogs that are barking. I don't know oh, who's somebody else's else dog. Somebody else's dogs have started. Um, Coda is amazingly quiet now. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, that was great. Lovely. I I couldn't yeah. join in because I got all the answers. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Sue, for all the work. I didn't do much. Yeah, work to me, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great for somebody to. Well, very difficult to do everything. Uh, mm. as you can I, imagine. So, I thought, I thought a lot of the people that would come would be people that knew stuff, which was the case. <laughs> but I came, to, I came to learn stuff. Yeah. And I knew a lot. I've heard a lot of those things, but just no recall. So I'm going to have to find a way to get those things to stick in my brain. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. Talking about <laughs> yeah. the, brain, yeah. you know? the dates and the archaeologist names were the ones that was throwing me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Probably really need to. I mean, George Ogan, I think, and Michael O'Kelly, but. Uh, the O'Reardon and PJ Harkness would be much less well known. The fascinating thing about uh, the O'Reardon one was, as I said, that uh, he didn't finish the excavation of Tara because he died. Mm. Um, and it was Rory de Valera that finished the excavation of Tara. <clears throat> but um, there's a blog post that I'm going to be writing about that because fascinatingly, at the time the excavations at Tara were announced, there was great controversy because there were some people who believed that Ireland didn't have a suitably qualified or eminent enough archaeologist to lead mm. this Tara Qu caused quite a controversy at the time. And actually, some British archaeologists leaped to the defense of the Irish, saying that there was a, a, a few names in there. O'Reardon would have been one. Uh, O'Kelly would have been another who, who, who were more than suitably qualified to lead mm -hmm. the excavations. Uh, it's amazing what goes on behind the scenes, politics and all that stuff. You know, that stuff that we never talk about. Wait, no, we talk about it all the time. <laughs> that deep, big dog bark, that's not... Who's, who's dogs? That's <laughs> dog. <laughs> that one, that's not my dog. <laughs> Anthony, the Zoom has worked very well. We should do it more often. I think so. Um, it, really, what it's down to is just for, for me to just... Um, Get my act together. I mean, I the interaction is lovely with everybody being able to see and sort of yeah. just have a quick chat. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, I have an. Oh, there's Peter's dog. That allows up to a hundred participants. So yeah, um, we should use it more often. Yeah, definitely. You yeah, know? it's a good idea. Um, I am I, conscious of the fact that uh, I'm, I'm I'm not going to specifically return to the conversation series on Zoom. Um, but what I have been doing in preference to the patrons of Mythical Ireland is I've been actually bringing the 
myself and my <coughs> crewman are going. When we did a film with uh, Michael Quirk, the storyteller and woodcarver in Sligo. It was fantastic. Yes, that was wonderful. And currently in the final stages of editing is the next one in the series, which is with Michael Sla Slavin. Michael is the author of the Book of Tara and he runs the old bookshop on the Hill of Tara. And uh, mm -hmm. Michael is 91 and uh, uh, an amazing amount of wisdom and knowledge. And actually he looks 20 years younger. And we had a mm -hmm. most lovely conversation a week and a half ago up in his bookshop, uh, which I recorded. Um, I probably I'll just stop recording now first, and then I'll announce.